Welcome to Ball Talk Deep, where we talk deep about ball. It's Andrade and Irwin back at it again. Today we're going to talk about the Los Angeles Clippers and all our takeaways from their entire postseason uh, run. Everything we were able to observe, absorb, and analyze based off eye tests from watching the games to all the stats and all the on-court, off-court drama, rumors, all that bullshit tied into one. And these are going to be all our takeaways from that and what we kind of project uh, from what we get from these all that takeaways. good stuff and I cannot name a better place or where to start these takeaways than what? NBA Twitter oh that's true that's true and if you guys don't know tell them what we've been doing yeah man so we've been doing this for the reaction videos when Better Card Rider well, be we here we do tweets of the nights we do tweets of the nights and for any other videos we do highlight tweets which we're gonna do right now yeah we just gather everything from stats to memes jokes um, and anything to do that we think would be cool to, to put on the video so you guys could get and who most important to start off with than Paul Pandemic George? P. Oh, my Whoa. bad. Definitely not. Not anymore. Hey, not anymore. Playoff, Playoff P. P. We, done, we saw the arrival, the official arrival, formal arrival of Playoff P. And what better way to do it than... Let's go... Let's start off with this one from NBA Stats. Paul George is the first player in NBA history to score 40-plus points on at least 75% field goal percentage, 50% from the three, and 100% from free throw in a postseason game. That was his best game, probably his best game of his career, definitely his best game from this postseason that he had against Phoenix. I'll tell you this, he cannot get any better than 100%. <laughs> Facts. Hey, and then NBA history... Adding on to this Paul George arrival, Paul George became the third player since the 96-97 season to score 30-plus points on 80% shooting or better in the second half of a postseason game, joining Anthony Davis in 2020 and Dwayne Wade in 2010. Great company. That is fucking great company. And then let's keep going with the PG momentum, man. PG was, in fact, a motherfucker's asses. Y'all see that. Look at this gra graphic. Paul George, 2021 playoff rankings. First in minutes, first in points. Second in field goals made. Second in free throws made. Uh, second in three-pointers made, even though that is tied with Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. Third in rebounds, fifth in assists, and I couldn't think of a better picture to tie that in with. And I want to throw this in. Let's not forget, wow. Paul George is not Pandemic P anymore. Let me remind you, the new Pandemic P now is Christos Porzingis. And let's not also forget, hit that like, hit that comment, subscribe. Ooh, All good right. shit. Move on. All right. Um, all right, just so you guys know, it's not, it's not all PG tweets, but we're just going to get all the PG tweets out, out of, of the, the way. way. Yeah. NBA History also said, Paul George becomes the first player in LA Clippers franchise history to record 40 plus points, 10 plus rebounds, and 5 plus assists in a postseason game. Honestly, when you look at that stat sheet, that looks like something that Kawhi Leonard could do. But why didn't Kawhi do that? Because Kawhi didn't fucking play! His selfish ass. <laughs> and lastly, again from NBA history. If you guys have noticed a pattern, NBA history tweeted a lot about Paul George, and that says a lot because we're talking about historic shit right here from the NBA League. Paul George has put up 20 plus points in all 18 games he's played in this postseason. The only other players in NBA history to score at least 20 in their first 18 games of a single playoffs are Michael Jordan in 1992, 97, and 98, Kobe Bryant in 2008, and Kevin Durant in 2012 and 2018. God damn, that is beautiful company to stay around. But let's move on to someone else who also had a special yeah. uh, season for I, the I was, I was about to say that, man. I'm like, why are you not bringing Bobby Schmurda up over here, man? What the fuck, man? He's <laughs> about to get paid. Clippers Nation said Reggie Jackson was about to retire. It's a good thing he decided to stick around. Rejuvenated in the 21 NBA playoffs, he ranked third in minutes, eighth in points, eighth in field goals made, first in three points made, 13th in assists, and ninth in steals. He definitely had himself a playoff run for not, his career. Not bad. He's going to get paid. Yeah. That's going to be very interesting to see. It's going to be very interesting to see. And that about wraps it up. Yes, I'll just sir. put this one because the Clippers tweeted this one. So why not have one Clippers tweet? First player in NBA history, we already said, with at least 40 points, 13 rebounds, 6 assists on 75% field goal in the postseason. And y'all already know that was Game 5 versus Phoenix. Let's end it on that because look, that's just gorgeous graphic pg give him his flowers right now and gotcha. that wraps it up but with that being said man let's get to the takeaways that we found with the clippers right now paul george got it yeah paul oh. george is this is let's not forget when paul george and Kawhi teamed up everybody was hyped because yeah, they were like were. oh shit this is for real this is yeah. that that's 
honestly, when they teamed up, arguably already like the best duo or one of the best duos in the NBA because that was before Kyrie well, and Kevin Durant did and shit. Yeah, a and, lot of a lot of people last year, including myself, I had the Clippers winning it all last year. But shit, the Nuggets had something yeah, to say about and that. The last other year. duo that was really highly praised was the LeBron and AD one, but still. AD had had come back had come from the Pelicans who couldn't take him that far. PG we've seen Pacers PG even in OKC he had his moment and it's like oh shit and then like Roman said last year it didn't work out but Meltdown. this year this was the duo we were excited. even though this <laughs> this year is funny because PG disappeared in 2019 I mean 2020 and Kawhi disappeared in 2021. He's gonna so disappear in the off season. We're what? still waiting for these two tag. <laughs> <laughs> to be on the floor together and 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 have like a consistent postseason run together. Because honestly, one of my biggest takeaways from this Clippers team for this season was, a, they're this is a serious duel. This is a legitimately serious duel to watch out for. Um, all kind of depends if Kawhi stays. But if Kawhi stays, and he stays healthy, because <laughs> that's the important part, then I really think I would have them as one of the favorites next season coming in. Especially, not just PG, because the other takeaway was, and I'm sure yours was too, was that this Clippers team as a whole still got it. We saw definitely some shinings of that uh, Clippers team that we saw before Kawhi coming in, the one that Doc Rivers led on quite a regular season run. And we saw like a balance of that team, like a little bit of that team and a little bit of last year's team pumped up together at their best. Yeah, exactly, definitely. And mind you, they had some injuries on themselves. Serge Ibaka, he was out for a very long time as well. You know, he wasn't uh, there for the playoffs. So something you got to take into consideration something, uh, as yeah. well. And, they and, and a lot of other YouTubers kept bringing it up, and I was like, oh, good shit, good shit. Because there were times where I forgot. And I like I think even said in the, in the postseason preview that we did, because we do playoff previews, guys, by the way, um, Serge Ibaka was a big reason why I also thought they, they were going to have a deep run because Serge has... Uh, championship pedigree, postseason experience. So it's like, oh shit, he wasn't there either. But the good thing is with injuries, it gives other players the chance to step up. I'm talking about Terrence Mann. I'm talking about uh, uh, Patrick Beverly. I'm talking oh, about Terrence. I'm talking about Reggie Jackson. They had the, the the chance to step up. And mind you, that's yeah, just gonna brings up Patrick Beverly. When I brought up Patrick Beverly in one of our our series previews, I forgot. But I think it was against Phoenix. He was like, oh yeah, Pep Bev. What is he gonna do? He's not even playing. I'm like, wait, wait around. What do he do? What did he do? He didn't do much. He was annoying as he fuck. He didn't do much, but, man. Uh, but, yeah, he pushed he, the shit out yeah, of him. Yeah, he pushed uh, out of Chris Paul. That's what he did. He's uh, annoying as fuck. But, I mean, I'm saying, that, so. I'm saying that because he's not on my team. But I bet you he's somebody that you love to have he's on your team. He's someone you would want. Yeah, like Draymond exactly. Green. Exactly. And uh, his, his what he does for a team doesn't show up. Doesn't always show up on the stat sheet. Um, but, yeah, man, some takeaways to come up with the Clippers. Uh, Ty Lu, they got the, they definitely got the right coach if they're gonna win that championship. Despite everything that went on, he pushed up all the right buttons and he took he took as much as possible out of that Clippers team to advance as far no, as possible. No facts, and you guys are seeing this graphic right now. Winning this coach went back against the wall. I think it was ten two. Now it's ten three because obviously he lost his last one. But hey. that's quite a record to still watch out for. Because some people will say that the coaching aspect is overrated. I would disagree with that point with Ty Lue, man. Because Hell yeah. If, if it was any other coach, man, they no. would have gotten their asses kicked, man. They would have lost that series against the Utah Jazz. They had no business uh, without Kawhi to advance, you know, to the Western Conference Finals. And the fact that they got two games out of the Suns as well, that they might be the eventual champions, even more so. No, yeah. I yeah. think uh, Ty Lue, in this postseason run, one of my takeaways is that he has pushed himself, not even pushed himself, he has cemented himself as a top five coach in the NBA okay. uh, overall, in my opinion. I would have Spostra, Nurse, Not nurse. Lou. You wouldn't have Nurse? Uh, I'm sorry, who? Oh, Lou has a championship too. And because Brad Stevens has stepped off, like he's not a coach no more. Yeah. So that's gone. So now those are the three. And obviously the one I haven't said yet because that's the most obvious one is Pop. That's four spots. Okay. Who, who else will fill up that spot? But you're telling me Ty Lue isn't... Now he's some mental. No, Ty Lue, yeah. No, Ty Lue, yeah. And you're not going to put... You're not, you wouldn't put Nick Nurse in the top five in the entire NBA? Monty Williams might might, might make a, a vouch for Monty top Williams, five, yeah. maybe after... Especially if they win the championship. But I don't know. Nurse for me, definitely up there, man. Definitely okay. up there. I mean, that, that, we could do a discussion. And Lou has that. cemented it. The other point I wanted to bring up as well is Paul George, definitely a uh, number two. Uh, that you want to be have you know like I said the comparison with uh, Giannis and uh, Chris Middleton I was about to say Batman Superman Paul George whatever you want to name him Batman Superman Playoff Pete he definitely has it and number three 
As much as maybe people are not going to disagree with Nat, Kawhi needs to stay. If he stays, they're going to be fine. But we'll see. One we of my know, takeaways man. is Bad. that I don't know. No, okay, I don't even want to talk about Kawhi. One of the takeaways I had they're gonna, they're, Even though there's rumblings, he might join Luka. He might come in Miami. But nobody knows when it comes to Kawhi, man. Yeah, yeah man. No the only shit. one that knows is Kawhi, Kawhi himself. And he's like... No, there's one person that knows. His uncle. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker. <laughs> You know, yeah, that motherfucker. But <laughs> um, one of my takeaways is that watch out for Terrence Mann. I'm serious. Watch out for Terrence Mann. Now you say that he's and gonna be a star. What I mean by that is, uh, is that I I think he's if he stays on the Clippers, he will be a a, a noticeable, maybe significant uh, factor for that team. He mm-hmm. really will because besides that crazy game he had. Uh, PG was even sweating him in that in in the interview after, mm-hmm. and it sounded genuine. It didn't just sound like one of those times where you're just kind of sweating the team because like they had a good game. Like he kept saying that like, we've been telling him to shoot, we've been telling him to play out, and then you saw after that game, he didn't have something like that, but he he had his moments in games after, and he's a young player. So one of my takeaways is that a hey, that kid's future is bright, and if he stays on this Clippers team, that Clippers team's future stays bright because. Now you have another player that you can keep developing instead of just having to trade or look for other ones. And he's a good size. He can shoot. And you develop his other weaknesses. Don't know where it goes from there. But that it's it's always good to know that, okay, we have someone else we can work with slash work on. You know Absolutely, I mean? man. Something good to know. And yeah. I can't say any takeaways for Kawhi, to be honest, because one, I, we don't know if he's going to stay. And two, what else can I say about Kawhi? I, okay, but, actually, one takeaway I have from Kawhi is that this postseason – Hurt his legacy. I think it hurt his legacy. Because now, the one of the, I'm, a, I'm a Kawhi fan. I'm not going to lie. I like him. I like him a lot because he's quiet and he lets his game speak for itself. But over the past two years now, I've been annoyed with Kawhi. Where the sense like, all right, bro, you... Some people could take the quietness as humble or whatever. But he just seems slightly pretentious, slightly like... You know, one of those quiet people that's kind of cocky, but he just won't vocally say or verbally say it. But it's like, okay, you don't have to verbally. Your face says it all. Or like, you know you know what I'm talking about? Uh, man, man doesn't have emotions, man. How can you tell? And uh, his facial expression sometimes. What, really, man? You do. His facial nah, expression is this, man. It could be what? Because I I've, I know people like that. I've met... You have friends like that. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. And yeah, it's just damn. like... my friends out there. Like, <laughs> like it's just like, yo, chill, man. Okay, I can see you, you think highly of yourself. And Kawhi, if you're going to think highly of yourself, which you deserve to, I'm not saying he doesn't, humble yourself a little because availability is the best ability. And your motherfucking ass keeps not being available. And now if the rumors are true um, that you are having trouble with the L.A. staff, that's two medical staffs that you are getting annoyed with. And hey. at that point, at that point, if you keep bitching and shit, you know like, what? it doesn't matter how good you are unless you are a LeBron or a Jordan. But guess what? You're not. You're gonna start rubbing. Look at the Marcus Cousins. It's shit happens, man. You know what? So humble yourself. Yeah, I feel you, but you know what? I know I'm back and forth about that, but Kawhi, if in your brain or when you're getting an update, a Kawhi update, come to South Beach. I'll still welcome you, Miami. After exactly. All the shit I just said. I would welcome you with open arms. Let's make this thing happen, man. Um, and don't worry, man. Even if you're down, we got Butler and we got Bam. We could we we could survive a series or two. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. The Bucks I mean, fucking kick their asses. I think the Miami Kawhi makes a good fit. I'm not going to make a whole video about it, but I've wanted to say, I think Miami's a good fit because she's a quiet guy. In Miami, as I just read the star players that we've tried recruiting on BTD. <laughs> James Harden. It's like you can have a quiet life in Miami, believe it or not. Yeah, you could, man. Just All move, that South Beach party life, nah, just move that's up. a very small just, corner just of move, Miami. Just move the I'll pine, tell you that much. Move to Pinecrest, man. Nobody's going to bother you there, Bro, man. Pinecrest. Well, well, actually, you wouldn't live up. Bro, just move to Sunny Isles and you're good, bro. And that's literally just a drive from, from fucking Bayside. Yeah, for real. Sunny Isles, man. You'll be left alone there. But anyways, guys, let us know in the comments uh, what you guys think, man. Uh, Clippers fans. How do you feel about this season, man? You excited? You know, you guys broke that curse. Made it to the conference finals for the first time ever. If I was a Clippers fan, I would be excited because um, the future looks good. Even uh, if Kawhi doesn't come back and you guys keep PG. Oh, here's another takeaway. Future's still looking bright. That's the crazy part because PG cemented himself. And don't forget, he's not that old. He's like, what, young 30s? No, I think, well. Late 20s? Yeah, late 20s, maybe. And um, that's still time. And especially in today's NBA, uh, LeBron last year, Chris Paul this year, 
mid thirties is the new mid twenties, apparently. <laughs> Woo! Hell yeah! <laughs> and yeah, you guys have a good. T- you got w- PG stays. I think Beverly's still on contract. He stayed. Beverly no, stayed. I don't know. Yeah, Beverly's oh, he's, uh, uh, Terrence Mann. Oh, yeah. He signed that shit that people yeah, were talking shit about. Uh, Terrence Mann. I think I had it wrapped up here. Uh, whatever. You guys will be fine. But let us know in the comments. Yeah, like. you guys are more than fine. That's the yeah. thing. That's all I wanted to close it out on. Oh, and you guys still got Kennard. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, you, like Irwin said, Ibaka comes back. Morris is going to be there. That Ronda contract is honestly the big mistake one that kind of stays. But other than that, hmm. You guys are good. Just let's see what happens with... Uh, hey. Actually, I think the Marcus Cousins might come back too. Hey, it's all good, man. Anyways, let's, uh, either way, appreciate all the love and the hate. You guys already know. Catch us on Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, all podcast streaming platforms. And before I end it off over here, 90% of y'all not subscribed, man. What the fuck, man? Do something about that shit. Hit that sub button. We'll catch you guys soon for now. Take later. care.